welcome back to Santino Sunday Cigar Review. We This week we are doing the Hoya de Nicaragua CT, so stay tuned. Alright, welcome back everyone to Santino Sunday Cigar Review. I'm Mike, this is Maddie, and Sparks behind the camera. Um, as Maddie said, we're, we're um, going to review this Hoya de Nicaragua Antonio by Drew Estate. It's not a new cigar, it's been out a long time, but I thought it'd be a fun review, and um, here's why. A little personal note, this cigar sat in our humidor for the longest time with you know, no one purchasing it. I couldn't figure out why it wasn't moving. And um, I decided one day to smoke this thing. And I think I discovered the same thing that I think a lot of people passed on this cigar. They see that that Ecuadorian um, Connecticut shade wrapper and they just assume that it's a, it's a mild cigar. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, early on I did as well. So smoking this thing look i'm not going to get into all the craziness all the, there's a lot of reviews out there about this cigar because like i said it had it, it's not a new cigar you know there's people that say it oh the complexity is unbelievable and then there's people that say it's not complex at all i'm not here I, well, you know i'm th this week is going to be kind of fun i'm not going to delve into the to all the notes and is it leather is it earthy is it toasted is it hay is it this is it that is it got a mineral component I just think the cigar is fun, and Maddie, you're gonna you're gonna have a lot of input and say yeah. about this today. So I'm in my first third, um, and I, you know, it, it, first of all, the construction, all the components you want in a premium brand cigar, especially with the name behind it, like Drew Estate, it 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 it, it fills all those components. Um, you know, the I purposely ashed it, and we'll get to that reason in a minute here. Uh, but it held a good long ash. Uh, this is a cigar that you can uh, let the ash go as long as you can. It's that that would be fun. The construction is good. You know, I, you know, is it rolled tight? Is it rolled loose? You know, a lot of different uh, opinions about this cigar. But what it is is unique, and yeah. you don't expect what you get out of this cigar. This is one of those rare exceptions in the in the humidor where. The rule of thumb is, you know, the, the shade of the wrapper, the age the wrapper, you know, usually dictates it, its content. But this is one of the rare exceptions that everything you see about this cigar is pretty much not what you expect. Yeah, and why I really like that is because of the fact that it has that Connecticut shade wrapper on it, but throughout the whole entire cigar, it's a thick, full-body, full-strength Nicaraguan cigar. And that shade wrapper really adds a creaminess and a smoothness to the cigar that you don't, it's not going to be jagged or harsh on your palate like a, a couple of other cigars that are in the strength profile would. And for that reason, whenever I did smoke, this was one of my favorite cigars to pick in the humidor. Um, it, it has slowly become one of my favorites as well. You yeah. know, I, I will say one characteristic that stands out in the first third because of the the Connecticut shade wrapper, it is really silky, creamy, and smooth. But then, because of the binder and filler is Nicaraguan, you get that robust punch, mm -hmm. and that combination, it, it's such a dichotomy, but it, it, it I'm, I'm just a total fan of this cigar, and I, I wish I didn't let it sit around as long as I did, and we, uh, been able to convert a lot of people over to this cigar because I think they had the same misconceptions as as I did. Yeah. Oh, in fact, one of our regulars, I gave this cigar to him, and he was just like, "Are you sure about that? You know, I smoke full strength, full bodied." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm pretty sure about that." And uh, I gave it to him, and now that's pretty much whenever he comes in, that's what I see him smoke. So. All right, guys, I'm really getting into this thing, so we're going to take a quick break while I smoke into the second third, so stay tuned. All right, welcome back, everybody. Um, I'm in the second third. Something I've noticed right away is it's settled down. I get almost a little lemony zest in the background. Um, you still kind of get that, that earthiness because of the um, Nicaraguan tobacco. 
but it's it the the the, the spice has, has settled a bit. It, it it's really smoothing out as well. It's it's and now it's beginning that really creamy, silky, smooth taste. Really enjoying it. Um, so that's a little tasty note I get, a little different than in the beginning when it was more like toasted cedar, grassy, leathery, what's also typical of what when you smoke yeah. a Nicaraguan. But now we're getting that, I think, Connecticut wrapper coming through yeah. really fine. Uh, Maddie, what would be the price point of this cigar? So the price point of that cigar here at Santino's is nine dollars and seventy cents. All right. And you know, interesting thing I we were we were talking about in, in yeah. the break. You know, people talk about how hot or how fast their cigars burn. Yeah. And so we tried something here today and we've got some feedback for you. Maddie, how hot does this cigar so burn? So that cigar, uh, cigar itself burns at around 868 degrees Fahrenheit. We have this little this thermometer gun here and I kind of figured it out. Um, one thing that was really cool and I did notice, and this probably goes along with a, a good tip that I have, is that whenever you keep the ash on the cigar, it actually, on the surface, raises it about 200 degrees cooler than what it would if you just ashed. So it, it acts like an insulator, like a yeah. like a uh, the plastic on a copper wire. Yeah, exactly. So if you are smoking a cigar and you have and your cigar is always too hot whenever you're smoking it, make sure that you're not constantly ashing it because that can affect the heat of everything from it reaching to your fingers and everything like that. And and I do I see a lot of seasoned cigar smokers even here everywhere I go. You know, even though they've never really smoked cigarettes, they still treat the cigar like a cigarette they're yeah. constantly take a puff or two and ash it and all that does is increase the intensity heat of the burn it's going to smoke faster it's like i said you're going to feel the heat coming down to your fingers yeah. you're you, you need to let the cigar settle and do its thing it's also going to change i think the notes as well yeah it'll affect the notes and everything in the tasting of the cigar um, it'll get a bitter taste because that cigar is being scorched and um the heat is coming up as it's passing by so right yeah so you know we're always trying to think of some new innovative things to discuss or answer people's questions we don't you know like i said we don't want to be that typical review um you know i think in general the majority of cigar smokers men women whoever they don't you know they're not as concerned with all these subtle notes you know a lot of people don't retro inhale or can't retro inhale you know, those are left to the experts. People just want to know, is it a good smoke? Yeah. You know, and so that's kind of what we try to provide here. Uh, we will get into certain specifics on certain episodes and cigars and things, but people just want to know what to try. Yeah, exactly. So and that's why I picked this cigar for today. All right. Well, uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll wrap up in, uh, in our third segment, so stay tuned. All right. I'm wrapping up this fine cigar it's a little little sad um with my cup of joe here this is by the way great morning cigar with a cup of coffee yeah. sitting outside you know with the breeze blowing this this is just great anytime cigar but this is just paired perfect with a cup of coffee um anyways the notes i'm tasting now in the last third is still a little bit of that lemon zest which is a really nice almost refreshing kind of side note still very creamy getting a little um now a a, a nutty flavor um but once again just just a phenomenal cigar yeah so really and really really um well worth it so we'll just we'll just hop right in there yeah. with the try buyer deny i mean I, i'm sure you can tell this whole segment uh, this is a, it, it, it's a try, it's a buy for a lot of different levels. Not only the quality of the construction, the taste, but the price point. It's not often you find a cigar this amazing under ten dollars. Yeah. You know, um, now I, I know that's going to vary from state to state depending on taxes and, and, and different things. But here it's uh, it's under ten dollars, and uh, it, it's definitely a, a, a try and a buy. I mean, this could be you know really an everyday smoke. It, yeah. it could be an evening smoke after a, a good dinner. This you know this is obviously I'm enjoying it in the morning, so it's very well rounded, very um, um, you know it, it, it 
very utilitarian. You could use this in any in, in any environment. Mm -hmm. So, um, Maddie, right. bring us to a wrap here. So, I uh, think that about wraps it up here. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, uh, hit that notification bell, check all of the like links and stuff in the description below. Uh, on our website, if you go on to the events page, we're going to be having a uh, tasting event on the 26th, and it's going to be a bunch of like liquor and stuff that you probably won't get to taste that uh, like it's all very allocated stuff it's really rare and pretty nice stuff too so um i think that's about good yep all right stay uh stay tuned next week we'll have something fresh and new to discuss so thanks everyone remember at santino's we drink we smoke and we, we know, know things. things have fun y'all <laughs>